This demonstration is intended to assist medical practitioners with no procedural experience to appreciate the technical skills they would need to acquire for uterine evacuation using a suction catheter. There are several indications for uterine evacuation which is often achieved using suction. Inducing or completing a miscarriage can also be achieved using medication alone. I will discuss all of the requirements before using papaya fruit as a model to demonstrate this procedure. You would need access to a clean treatment room and equipment for checking completion of the procedure, either an ultrasound or a bench with a transparent dish and a backlight to be used to identify products of conception. In many operating suites, suction is generated by an electric pump attached by a tube to a catheter. In this demonstration, we will be using hand-held 60 mil syringes to create suction. You can see one of these MVA kits next to the other instruments on the right. Before you begin, both you and your patient need to understand why this is being done. You will want to know whether anti-D will be needed and you should decide whether to test and treat potential infections or give prophylactic antibiotics. You will conduct a bimanual vaginal examination or you could use ultrasound to estimate the volume of material in the uterine cavity. At this point you will be developing an expectation about the amount to be removed during the procedure. Screen for surgical risk factors. If there is any scarring of the uterus or the cervix, there will be an increased chance, although still a small chance, of surgical injury. In many places in the world, these procedures are conducted with local anesthesia only or with no anesthetic at all. If you plan to provide a general anesthetic, the anesthetist will screen for anesthetic risks. All of these risks can be avoided by using uterotonic medications to empty the uterus rather than using surgery. There are many interventions which can reduce discomfort and augment pain relief. The more you prepare your patient, the less fearful she will be. Manual vacuum aspiration syringes have an airlock, allowing a vacuum to be created inside the barrel. There are a number of different models. This one is not exactly the same as the ones we will be using later. Prostaglandin preparation three hours beforehand makes for easy dilation and reduces the risk of surgical injury. The procedure starts with examination of the size and position of the uterus. You need to develop a picture of the uterine cavity and its location in your mind's eye before you place instruments into it. The cervix is prepared with antiseptic, exposing with a speculum and fixed in place using a tenaculum while a paracervical local anaesthetic block is applied. If local anaesthetic with adrenaline is instilled near the attachments of the broad ligament to the uterus, this provides pain relief and it will also restrict blood supply from the uterine arteries into the vascular bed that you are about to disturb. If you deliver local near those arteries, you may see the cervix blanch and become pale as its blood supply diminishes. If you deliver local into the vascular tree, your patient's heart rate will accelerate. If you can keep the tip of the needle moving as you press on the plunger, you will avoid delivering the whole dose into any one blood vessel. Lure lock syringes work best because cervical tissue resists as fluid volume is injected. Rising pressure may cause the needle to detach from the hub of an ordinary syringe. Then local sprays back at the operator. Prostaglandin preparation causes cervical ripening and dilation. This usually allows dilators to pass through the cervical canal and internal os with little or no resistance. If the medication has been effective, the dilators are used to measure the width of the canal rather than forcibly opening it. Next, a catheter the same diameter as the last dilator is passed through the cervical canal, the internal os and the uterine cavity. The tip of the catheter should arrive at the fundus before the vacuum syringe is carefully attached. When the airlock is opened, negative pressure draws the contents of the uterine cavity, or the papaya seeds, into the syringe. Like placenta, papaya seeds are adherent to the inner wall of the cavity and you may need to rotate the catheter or withdraw and advance it for a few centimetres to dislodge them. Using a sharp curette to search for remnant products of conception is not recommended because it adds to the risk of injury. To assure yourself that the uterus is empty, use an ultrasound or conduct a visual check of the material you have removed.
Keep in mind that blood clot or small fragments of tissue remaining in the uterus at the end of the procedure will pass in the next few hours or days under the influence of the prostaglandin that you gave prior to the procedure. These are very low risk procedures with a mortality of 1 in 100,000 or less. However, both surgical and anaesthetic complications are possible. This is the reason why a supervised recovery area is required, as well as a pathway for women to access follow-up care. The day surgery discharge criteria applied by recovery nurses are reliable. You can assume that your patient is safe to be released into the community and has very little likelihood of deteriorating once she passes that test. Health Direct provides a very immediate avenue for sensible advice for women who become concerned about symptoms after discharge. Okay, and the first thing you're going to do is a pretend vaginal examination. So one person is going to hold that papaya and the other one is going to shut their eyes and feel it and try and think about the size and the shape of it and where that cavity is going to be and how far in you think you're going to push your suction tool. So then I want you to practice making a suction vacuum in that syringe. So you need to shut the port and then pull back on the syringe it's got little wings on it that pop out that stop it from plunging back. So you always want to be withdrawing material from the uterus. You never want to be squirting material into the uterus and that's your safety mechanism there. Then if you put your finger over the end and release it, you can feel the suction that you've created. Next thing is you're going to use either Hagar or Hawken dilators to create a cervical canal. I'm suggesting that the first cervical canal you make is quite small, like only six or seven millimetres across, because what happens in, with papaya is the more you pass things up and down the passageway, the wider it gets. And if it gets too wide, you're not going to be able to maintain your suction. It has to actually be clutching around the suction catheter. We've all got a seven to start with, so start, go up to seven millimetres, okay? In, in a real cervix, there would be a potential pathway there, and you just have to slide that tool up it, but in this case you're pushing to create a passageway. I want you to put that catheter into the cavity first and then attach your suction. Okay, so when it's in the right place, then you can attach your suction thing and release the vacuum and see if you can get the pips out. Across the world, a very large number of medical practitioners and midwives conduct millions of low-risk uterine evacuations every year. Novices need to perform a number of evacuations under direct supervision and go on to conduct procedures while experienced colleagues are in proximity before they attempt procedures in any setting where support is remote. Experience in dealing with anatomical variations and diagnosis of complications is needed before conducting these procedures in small rural hospitals or standalone clinics.